Hi, Mrs. Leon. How are you? Good, Courtney. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for joining me. Um, so uh, we set up this meeting to kind of have a discussion about some of the challenges that we're seeing um, with our students when it comes to middle school. So I appreciate you spending the time with me. So today I want to explore the topic of loneliness and procrastination. What have you seen or what is going on on your end? Yeah, so thank you for your time today. I'm glad to be here. Um, so what's going on on my end with loneliness and procrastination? Um, just what, from what I've seen in my own home, um, I think I've seen my children having a hard time coping with, there's so much time on their hands, there is so much to do, but how do I get at it and get it done and then have time still for myself where I'm by myself and I have time to do things that I like and I'm not just doing chores all the time or I'm not spreading my homework across the whole day. So really um, learning how to make a schedule at home um, and learning how to stick with that. Um, and then also I'm seeing them with their headphones on in front of their tablets or their, you know, their iPad and trying to do that for a long time, a long period of time. So as a parent, of course, I'm you know, saying, okay, that's enough iPad time, or that's enough tablet time, let's play a game, or why don't we color, why don't we draw, why don't we split up our time? So I'm seeing those two dynamics. It's either I'm gonna do my homework all day long, or I'm gonna sit in front of an iPad all day long by myself. Um, but there's no kind of in between where it's broken up and there's you know structure. Um, Maybe that's on my end, but I can kind of see where they are trying to do either one or the other all day long by themselves. Right. I, I've seen that a lot, too, and I can relate that even when you, you, we're trying to create a structure, but it's a remote structure that there's a lot of things outside our control. Right. And it's, it sounds like organizational skills is a key component to teach our kids right now. Mm -hmm. um, because that's what they learn in school, right? Bell, right. schedule, topic, assignments. And so now it's all on us to kind of figure this out. Right. Um, so I really love you brought up that point. So what are some recommendations for maybe some middle school kids to structure their time or organize themselves? Yeah, um, I would say they can make a schedule for themselves. Um, and they don't have to make a schedule that starts at 9 a.m they can make a schedule that they would like to stick to. So if they want to sleep in, they can. So they're rested. If they want to eat breakfast by nine or 10, okay. But they know that maybe from 11 to one o'clock, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to open up my laptop. I'm going to try to get some homework done. And then I need a break. Maybe I've been online too long. And maybe I need to go get some air, step outside, read a book, listen to some music, mindlessly scroll Instagram or TikTok or something. <laughs> and then say, okay, before three o'clock, I'm going to check over my assignments. I'm going to see if everything is completed. And if something's not completed, I can take that time and get it done. Or I can choose if I still have time, I can do it tomorrow. Mm. Um, or maybe they want to do an evening routine. Maybe they're a night owl. But just writing down and sticking to a goal and saying, here's my goal. I want to at least spend two hours on my work or online um, doing what I need to do for school. And then sticking to it make the goal and stick to it. And even if they fail and their time frames are different than what they set out to or what they set on paper, it's okay. I still made a goal that from 10 to 12, at least two hours, I'm gonna do it. Well, today wasn't 10 to 12, it was one to three, but I did it. So they're setting goals and sticking to them. I really love that idea. So let me just recap that so we capture some of your key strategies. Sure. So the idea is to, Create a schedule that works for them. So an yep. organic schedule. Yes. So the important points in that schedule is the things that they have to do. So what they need to accomplish and then creating that break space and figuring out when they're the most productive. Is it morning, evening? So that they, they have a sense of how their day is going to flow. Yes. I love that. And then I like how you said, like, if it doesn't get done, like celebrate the successes of the stuff that get done yes. and move the stuff to the next day. Yes, yes. And I think also for them right now, um, a key component is communicating with their teachers. Um, just, hey, you know what? I took a long time on this assignment. I need more time or I need help. I'm working on this. I should have it by tomorrow. Um, I think teachers right now are understanding that children are not used to 
working from home, you know, just like their parents are not used to working from home. So um, I think teachers are more willing to be lenient and say, I at least have communication from a student and I at least know that they're trying and then they're just there to support them because that's basically what the teachers are here to do right now, support, help, instruct, direct, um, and just make sure that they are not, not being active during the day. Mm. So I like that. So communication. And I think that's a point that for parents were like, were you were even trying to learn how to communicate with remotely with the people we work with, with the teachers. Mm -hmm. So I love what you said. So emailing the teacher and saying, Hey, I, this took me a lot more time. Or I'm not clear on the instructions. I'll get it to you tomorrow. Or I need to set a time to talk to you about this. Right. So that's open communication. Because you said it, and I'm like, yeah, like as a parent and as a, <laughs> as a bully teacher, I'm like, you want that. But right. as a kid, I might be terrified. Right. Right. That's true. Um, I think maybe thinking um, intimidation, um, talking to my teacher, what is she going to say? What does she think if this is late? Um, but if maybe middle schoolers could understand that teachers right now are in the same boat as them. We are working from home. We have children around us. We have crazy things going on. We've got dogs barking, peeing on the floor, children being potty trained, you know, food on the counters, groceries needing to be done. And we still have our students we want to reach out to and encourage. Um, they would know that that's the backdrop of where their teacher is coming from and not this teacher that's just sitting there waiting for an assignment. Maybe they'd be more prone to just say, hey, I'm struggling. And their teacher might say, yeah, me too. It's a bad day. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Tomorrow will be a better day to hand in the assignment because I'm not going to look at it today. <laughs> See, you know? And I love that. It's like bringing that, that sense of being human back to teaching of like, yes. yeah, you're having a bad day. Me too. Like we're yep. together. <laughs> Let's start over tomorrow. Yes. I think that's really important for educators, parents, and kids to hear is we're all in this together. Yes, definitely. Good. So I like how we came up with the idea of schedules and then that creates a sense of structure, which would help with the flow. Cause we might be two, three, four weeks, or we don't know how long this could happen. Right. Um, with that said, when we think about how long, what about loneliness? What are some ideas about what we can do when we feel lonely or isolated? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, loneliness, isolation, that's a hard one. Um, so I think that if we are by ourselves for a long period of time and we're just listening to what's going on in here and not actually vocalizing it or speaking up and just saying, even just telling a family member, I'm feeling pretty lonely right now. Um, even if it is a sibling that you're not getting along with for the moment or for the week, if you just say, I know we're mad at each other and you can't stand seeing me, but I want to tell you, I feel really lonely. And they're like, I don't care. But you got it out. You got it off of your yeah. chest. You, you said it to someone. And maybe, you know, that sibling or that family member in an hour or so might come around and say, hey, you want to do something? Um, and you know what? If the children are feeling lonely, nine times out of 10 parents are probably also feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not just something that the children are facing. It's also what we are facing as adults. Um, we're isolated from our friends. We're isolated from our family members. We might have our spouse. We might not. Um, it might just be a single parent home, and it might just be the two of them, and mom or dad are just working all day, and the kid feels like they're by themselves. Um, you can read a book. You can try to get online and connect with somebody online. Maybe you have an on online account. Um, I would say journaling is a good also um, idea. You know, journal your thoughts. Journal your ideas, journal how you're feeling, um, write it down, um, and maybe even um, listen to some music. Um, do something that you like to do. Instead of just sitting and thinking, I feel lonely, I am lonely, I'm isolated, I'm by myself. Um, vocalize it and try to do something else to get you active, to get your mind off of the fact that we are in these walls 24 seven. Right. Oh, I love that. Okay. So let me recap what you shared because there's some key components and there's like one that warmed my heart that I almost Aww. cried about the sibling one. Aww. Because that was just beautiful because you're absolutely right. So your siblings love you, right? They're part of your unit. And even though we get annoyed with each other, we can't stand yes. each other. The fact that you take a risk and say, hey, I know you can't stand me right now, but I'm lonely. You're yeah. going to leave the room and your brother or sister or 
or even if it's cousins that live in your house are going to think, well, I care about them. Like, right. Something will come of it. Right. right. It they have to sit with those words for a few. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's it. They sit. So then they're going to do something because you said something. Right. Right. So that is so important. And I, I really love the idea of journaling because it's a lost art, right? But talking about this, like, it's not just like, if you don't have anyone to turn to, but just writing down your feelings and what's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. That's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a place that you can just put your thoughts down and just, you know, you can go back to them another day when you're having a great day and you can look back and say, wow, I was really feeling bad. And today is a way better day than yesterday was. And maybe realize that during this quarantine, we're going to have these up and down feelings. One day is going to be better than the next. And one day we're going to feel isolated. The next, not so much. Um, but I think that's to be expected in this time. Right. So the, the journaling aspect, let's get the feelings out. Like, especially you working in social emotional learning and instructing on all these important like inner skills we need the journaling can help get all these emotions out that are getting stuck yes we're not yes. numbing we're not suppressing yes. right right and then i like how you brought up so the idea of doing something using social media platforms to reach out so yeah yeah you know like there's I zoom there's instagram TikTok. But I, the, the thing I want to reiterate that you said is not just like scrolling, but interacting. That's the key yeah. point. Like, yeah. let me have a conversation or a discussion with someone. Yes, yes. That's, that's key, you know, to, to not feeling isolated anymore. To, to connect with somebody, to, to tell them how you're feeling and see if they're feeling the same way. And finding that common ground and building community, even though we're not together, we are together in a sense because we're all feeling the same things. Adults to children, we're, we're just feeling it. It's yeah. hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got so excited when I saw your face because I'm like, <laughs> me too. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm actually working. <laughs> I'm actually doing something other than dishes. This is great. <laughs> or laundry or chores. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. So I think that when we feel that it's really important as parents and educators to share this with our, our students and our children that they're not alone. We're going through the same thing. Right. Exactly. We're all in this together. And I think that's what, you know, we keep hearing on the media and we keep hearing, you know, or just seeing online, but it's the truth. We really are. So once we get it off of our chest that I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling by myself, Nine times out of 10, whoever you talk to, they're going to tell you the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I was feeling that way yesterday, or I'm actually feeling that way today. I'm glad that you told me that. What, you know, what have you been doing? And a conversation ensues, and you get your mind off of the fact that you were feeling lonely, and you have someone to now connect with. Right. And you know what? I think, too, especially middle school kids, it's really important to be like, there's no room for judgment here. Let's leave right. that, like, drop yeah, it for true. now. Let's be open, because... We don't have time to deal with the, the, the judgment, the passive aggressive, the meanness, like right. I, it's connection. So I love that you brought that up. That's so good. Perfect. So as we wrap up this session, what are some key points that you think are important for us to remember? Well, I think that we need to remember that communication is key. We need to communicate. I think that will help us fight loneliness. Um, help those around us know how to help us, um, how to serve us better, uh, what we're dealing with. Um, and that might create a sense of um, compassion. You know, if somebody knows what you're feeling, how, what you're thinking and what's going on, they can be more sensitive to you. They can be more understanding. They can give you a little bit more grace. They can give you a little bit more mercy when you've got an attitude, when they're asking you, can you do these dishes? And they're like, ah, you know, they're just okay, she's in a funk today. He's, he's not feeling it today. This is hard for my children too. And I think that parents have to be reminded of that because we can get in our zones of, okay, today we're just going to clean this house. And these kids haven't done any chores all week. And so she's going to do laundry and she's going to do the dishes and <laughs> your kid is not cooperating because they have feelings too. But um, they communicate. That's key. 
um, finding something that you enjoy doing by yourself um, in terms of maybe you do like listening to music. Maybe you like Pinterest. Maybe you like, like TikTok. Maybe you like um, writing music. Maybe you have an instrument that you like to play. Um, something that you like to do, make sure you do it every day, making time for that, right? Um, also going back to making that schedule um, of when am I going to do my homework? What hours work for me? When am I most motivated? When am I my best self so I can show up for myself and do my homework and get it done? Um, and just also, I think, really being lenient with ourselves in this time, um, just understanding that it's hard times and we do need to give ourselves a lot of grace and be patient with ourselves because we're all learning this new thing together. Yeah, and it was fast. It was given fast to us. It was like, Ooh, boom. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Life changed. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, good. oh, I love this advice. This is so helpful for parents, for students. Like, I really want to thank you for your time today. It means no, the world. No, thank you. No, it means the world to me. I appreciate your time. This was so much fun. I hope we get to do it again. Yeah, so I'm going to post this um, online so we can share these resources to <laughs> students and and teachers and parents and um, they can comment below and if they have any additional questions is it okay that um, I send them over to you so you can yeah okay, perfect. that'd be great I'd love some interaction <laughs> <laughs> thank you okay so I'll talk to you soon thank you so much okay thank you